Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Artist Loft Drawing 101 class. I'm in, your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I'm really excited about the topic of tonight's class because it is uh, one of my favorite drawing exercises. We're going to be doing some lined contour line drawing using uh, portraits, uh, faces, and uh, beforehand, we're going to be doing uh, a little exercise that uh, I also do in all of my classes on embracing mistakes, which goes very hand in hand with line contour, line drawing, because when we don't look at the paper while we're drawing, we're going to make a lot of marks that we maybe didn't intend to make. So, um, so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Oh, and after class at about 7.05 uh, p.m. Uh, Central Time, if you want to stick around and have any lingering questions, I'll be doing an Instagram Live on my Instagram, and you can join me there if uh, you have any lingering questions or just want to keep the, the discussion going. So I'll go ahead and switch over to my tabletop view here and so here's the class example um, for tonight we may end up with something that looks like this yours will probably look much different um, don't forget to tag your work with the hashtags make it with michael's uh, or michael's classes or both and uh, you can even tag me at adrian hodge art on instagram so that i can see your work and there is some of my my personal work on my business cards and other places you can find me online, uh, like Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art, or my website and email. Okay, so all we need for tonight's class. Some permanent markers. So I've got the Artist Loft dual tip uh, permanent markers here in a variety of colors. And I think I have the 12 pack, but uh, it comes in even more colors than this. You could get a, a pack with even more colors than this. And I've got a couple of different examples of uh, blind contour line drawings of my face here where I've, I've added some fun abstracted doodles or a little more than doodles because I'm using a lot of the, the patterns and and shapes and lines that I use a lot in my, my personal abstract work. Um, and then the last thing that you're gonna need in addition to uh, paper and the permanent markers is either a mirror or um, some photographs of some faces, or I was thinking with the Zoom, you could just look up um, at one of the lovely faces that you see on your screen. You could do your own face or maybe some of the other Zoom attendees um, if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, I was hosting a figure drawing class last year uh, during most of 2020 and some of uh, 2021. And uh, one time one of the attendees got a little, um, I don't know, frustrated with his, his drawing of the model and he ended up drawing all of the Zoom attendees and I thought that was so fun. Um, okay, so uh, to get started here, we're gonna do this embracing mistakes exercise. And this is something that I've done, like I said, in pretty much every class I've ever taught just as an icebreaker or warm up. Um, I've worked it into more advanced drawings. When I, I taught high school, I made um, my, my advanced drawing students had to do this in a very complex portrait, which was very tricky for them. Um, basically, we're going to make a mistake on the page or a mark that we didn't intend to make because the word mistake is subjective, right? Um, I just saw somebody ask, can you use a pen? Yeah, you can use any pen marker. Really, you can use any materials that, that you prefer and that you have handy. You could use a paintbrush and some paint, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, and actually, when I've done this in the past, um, as you guys know, a lot of my work, I use um, 
ink, like all of this is calligraphy ink that I use in my work. So I'm a big, big fan of ink. If you were to visit my studio, I've got just huge collection of all different kinds of inks, mostly calligraphy inks, um, but you know, writing inks, fountain pen inks. Anyway, so the way that I used to do this in all of uh, my in-person classes is I would get an ink dropper and I would come around and I would just drop some ink and kind of make a bit of like a Rorschach situation on everybody's paper. I would make the mistake for them. And then I would have everybody, you know, use whatever materials they preferred. Usually I'd just put permanent markers out like this and then have them turn the mistake into something more intentional. So that's all we're going to be doing here. But when it comes to making the mistake on purpose, a lot of people have a hard time, like, because we want to control what's happening. So that's why I would just come around with the ink dropper and make the, you know, make the ink drop mistake for everyone. And then they could do that. But since I can't come into all of your homes and, you know, make an ink dropper blot on your page for you to turn into something more intentional, I have to just trust that, that you're going to do this along with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to not look at my paper, uh, close my eyes, maybe look on the other side of the room, look at the ceiling and just scribble. But like really get in there and like do something messy, right? So that's what I want you guys to do. Make a mark on your page that is not intentional. You're not watching, just scribble. It can be big, it can be little. But try to do more than just like, you know, that, like try to like really get in there and make a mark, do some, do, you know, make it interesting mm -hmm. by like, you, you saw how I kind of like focused in one area and scribbled so that I got a nice lobby moment to happen. All right. So I'm trusting that everyone did that. We made our mistake. We did it. Okay. So now we're just going to look at it and try to figure out what it could be. What does it look like? Maybe turn your paper around, um, you know, look, look at it from a few different angles, see if, you know, it resembles something obvious that's jumping out to you. Uh, normally, I'm really good at looking at these and like instantly seeing something, but I'm not really sure what this could be. I'm kind of seeing maybe a bicycle. Um, I don't know. So if you're looking at yours and you don't know what it could be, and maybe it's because my brain is so focused on teaching right now that I'm not really using my imagination as much as I could. But if you're like me and you're like, I don't know, man, I don't know what that could be right now. It's just a scribble. Then maybe just start start drawing, start doodling, but we're going to take maybe five minutes here and just try to turn this into something a little more intentional. So we're embracing our mistake. Somebody said it looked like a bee. You kind of see the bee. I don't know, I kind of see a face with some glasses. I'm going to turn it into a face. Okay, here's the glasses so that it just make kind of a cartoony little face here out of it I think but yeah obviously yours is going to be different than mine so figure out what you're seeing in yours Start turning it into something more intentional. I'm 
did this once with a group of art teachers uh, when I was leading a professional development day for an entire district of secondary art teachers, middle school and high school. And that was so fun seeing, like my daughter actually helped me prepare all the ink blots the day before so that they would all be ready. So we just, you know, dropped a bunch of ink on some, some brown note cards and scribbled around on them. And I brought them to the, the teacher work day that professional development day that I was leading and passed those all out and did this exercise with the art teachers and their creations from those mistakes were some of my favorites. I don't have any of them because they all kept them, but I took some pictures of a few of them. If you scroll back far enough on my Instagram, you can probably find those. Fun stuff. Okay. I don't know what's going on here, but it's with some hair that's turning into rain. So the whole purpose of this exercise is really just to, you know, accept that sometimes when we're making art, things don't work out exactly the way that we hoped that they would. You know, we make a line thicker than we meant to, or we, um, you know, maybe have a blob of paint or you know, something that we would consider a big mistake and that maybe would cause us to, you know, start over or get rid of that and do it over again. And when we stop and pause and think like, how can I turn this unintentional mark into something that can feel more intentional? Oftentimes we end up making something that is, you know, better in some ways than the pieces where we, we used a lot of control and where everything went exactly like we wanted them to. So, and also such is life, you know, things don't always go exactly like we plan for them to in life. And we often have to make the most of situations that are not what we had planned for. So oh, it's a good practice just in general. Maybe I should turn this into like a hat or maybe the hair, more like that. I don't know why I did straight hair. When the circle was so crazy. Make it like some sort of hat or something. Anyway. You get the idea. Okay, and this is a perfect segue to what we're doing with the blind contour line drawing because uh, when we do blind contours, a lot of the lines that we're gonna make on the paper are going to be lines that we you know, didn't have much control over and we're gonna make a lot of marks that we're maybe not in love with or that we think look silly or you know, whatever label you wanna put on them. So having this in your mind beforehand to just embrace whatever happens and let it be what it is. Try not to judge it too harshly. And I don't know, I love the, the way that blind, blind contours look. Granted, I have a lot of experience drawing the human face and uh, you know, facial proportions if you are really, you know, just not digging what's happening when you're drawing the face, you can do this with, um, you know, some other subject matter. I wanted to do it with faces just because I think it's fun and interesting, but I also had an example where I was doing some blind contours of a vase full of flowers on my desk beforehand, and I thought maybe I would have this class be just blind contours, but not with portraits, but then I thought, no, let's do it with faces. So, but if you're, you know, struggling with the face and you want to do something else instead of, you know, a blind contour of a face, feel free. But I'm going to be drawing my face um, and then adding something to it to, you know, create, and it could be like your favorite doodle. 
you are um, welcome to use some of the patterns and lines that I've done here. Um, but since this is very close to my, my personal work where I do a lot of abstract work, just, you know, tag me if you're gonna maybe, um, you know, use some of the same sort of mark making that I'm using since, since it's very similar to my, my whole, my whole deal. Okay, so let's get started doing some blind contours. If you've never done a blind contour before, um, I think I've explained it a little bit by now, um, we're going to not look at the paper while we're drawing. So we're going to just look at the subject that we are drawing and we're not going to look at the paper <clears throat> or our drawing hand. But um, you know, it's very easy to glance down and if you're facing forward, like I've got my mirror right in front of me and I'm gonna be drawing from my mirror. So if you have a mirror nearby that you could place in front of you, now would be a good time to do that. But what would be even better is if you place the mirror not right in front of you, put it kind of off to the side so that you have to turn your body in your chair away from the paper in order to face the mirror. And actually, what I'm saying that I'm going to move my mirror so that I'm doing that so that I'm not as tempted to look down. But if you catch yourself looking down, that's fine. Um, it happens. But um, what's likely to happen when you do look down is you're going to immediately judge what you're seeing on the paper. So and then that's going to bring, you know, a lot of psychosis into it. You're going to maybe want to fix it or you're going to want to, you know, start yeah, you're just going to judge it. So the more you can really do a, a pure blind contour and not look at your, your drawing, the better. Because this is not about having a perfect, amazing product right now. So really just let go of any ideas that you have of, you know, needing your expectations to be fully met and let yourself, you know, just embrace what's happening, just like we did with, with that embracing mistakes exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna use my black marker and I'm gonna use the thick side of my marker. You can use any color and any side that you want. If you wanna watch me first, and I want us to do this a few times. We're not just gonna do it once. So I'm not expecting that the first one we do is gonna be the one that we elaborate on. Uh, we'll just choose our best one here. So um, I'm facing my body away from my paper and I'm going to start, I'm starting with my eyes and in a traditional blind contour line drawing, you wanna keep it one continuous line so you're not picking up your pen, but I like to pick up my pen, so I'm probably going to, but I've also been doing this for several years, so I've got a pretty good idea of like where I'm at on the page. I also do sometimes glance down, I'm not gonna lie. I do glance down. So if you find yourself glancing down, don't be too hard on yourself. I just don't want you to judge what you're seeing. And like I'm always saying, I'm not drawing the hard outline around you know, my eyes, even though it may seem like I'm doing that in some places, I'm drawing the shapes of the shadows and the shapes of the light that I'm seeing. I got all the way up here and I realized I didn't put my other eye in. Well, I did glance down you know. I didn't put my eyebrow in the middle of the time here. So I glanced once here and put the other eyebrow in. There. So what's happening here is I'm having a very direct conversation, communication between my brain, my eyes, and my hand that's drawing. So it's a very pure observational thing uh, that we're doing here. All right, so that's one. So if you wanna go ahead and get started and start doing some as well, I'm gonna do another one. We're just gonna do this for probably 
15 or 20 minutes here. So go really slowly. Take your time. I'm gonna have that pure communication between our drawing hand and our eyes, which are observing the subject. And like I said, if you're not too keen on drawing yourself or drawing a face and you feel more comfortable with an object around the room, feel free. The faces are fun. We often start this in a class using hands. So make everybody draw their hands first. The more you do this, the more accurate you will start to get. I remember being so impressed when I started my started teaching public school and I was teaching with an art teacher who had been teaching for 17 years and I watched her do a blind contour and I was like, there's no way you didn't look, that looks so good. She'd also been doing it longer than me at that point. Well, still longer than me. I guess that was about 11 years ago. All right, that's number two. Third one now. We're just gonna keep doing this so we accumulate a lot of blind contour drawings of faces here. So look for those areas where the light is hitting the face directly, shadows that are falling across. I feel like I keep giving myself Andy Warhol hair here. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> I'm going to try to go really slow this time. If you can tell me how to go slow, I'm going to go a little fast. Ooh, I left one of my eyes empty, but this is one of my favorite ones so far. And remember, we are going to add some embellishments to these. So if there's something missing, you can wait to fix it or add anything to it. If you glance down and look at it, try to go back to the blind drawing to, you know, keep adding to it. That's probably my favorite one so far.
Ooh, that one got really creepy. I was really focusing on the shadows around my eyes. <laughs> Okay, and then one other trick I'm going to show you real quick. If you're not thrilled with how these are coming out, I'm going to overlap. I'm going to do like three or four of them. But I'm going to use uh, three different colors and overlap them. I'm going to use blue, purple, and green since I think those colors look nice together. You could maybe use, you know, red, orange, and yellow. It might be nice, you know, warm colors or cool colors or just colors that you think look nice together. And I'm gonna just over. I'm gonna do three blind contours on the same page, using different colors, and I'm gonna overlap them. I'm going to look at where I'm starting with the second color. All right, I can tell I'm like really looking intensely at myself in the mirror here because all my eyes are like super wide eyed looking. Okay, so that was my one overlapping three different colors. I'm going to do one more. Let me go back and start to embellish one of them. But first, I'm going to ask some of you guys to hold up your examples. I want to see what you've done. So I use this exercise all the time anytime I get stumped with what I'm drawing. Like if I can tell I'm just in my own head and I'm trying to force my idealized version of something or the proportions are really off 
or you know an angle is really off something is just you know not right with the subject that i'm drawing and it's usually a figure or a face i'll stop and do a few blind contours of, of the subject. And then it usually becomes crystal clear what I'm missing because the eyes do not lie. Your eyes that are observing and your hands that's following or your eyes that are observing are, are seeing are likely going to be more accurate than what your brain is telling your hand to do because we get in our own way a lot when we're drawing and so yeah even though like the proportions are off um you know if i'm talking about like the shapes of shadows and the shapes of light that i'm seeing like that's really what i'm drawing here i'm drawing like the shadows on the side of my nose and the shadows around my eyes you know if i was really struggling you know, with a certain shape, and then I do a blind contour, and then I see what I drew when I was doing it blind, likely it will eliminate, you know, what I was missing. You know, like this one right here, I feel like is really strong, even though that's kind of crazy, you know. Obviously, in a lot of ways, there's some aspects of it where I see myself. I see like I've really captured a certain likeness um, with some of these. Maybe not that one. That's certainly the best. Certainly the better one. Let's see. Which one did I like the best? I liked the one where I left the eye empty. Okay, so I want to see some of y'all's examples. So does anybody want to hold up like their best one or maybe their best two or three and let us see them in the this one I feel like I captured some sort of emotion in my face. I don't know, I just like it, even though it's it's crazy. It feels feels like my favorite so far. We'll spotlight a few folks. Oh, I love that, Nadine. Look at that. You really captured a likeness there. I'm really impressed. I can tell you went really slow. Oh, did you look? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I was just curious if she glanced at it and, and looked on that one. Can we go back to Nadine for one second? I got to find her video one second. Oh, sorry. There we go. I got it. Did you look at your drawing or did you keep it blind the whole time? You can just give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you looked. Did you look? You did <laughs> a little bit. Okay. I was just curious. That's fine. I tried not to look. I feel like mine, you know, I was just in solidarity wanting to be as blind as possible. But definitely when I look, I get the, you know, like the head feels more together. Oh, wow, Christina, I love, see, I love it when I see stuff like that, because I can tell you embraced this exercise and you didn't look, you know, like when I see the lines all over the place, I know that you really trusted, you know, the, the process. Thank you for sharing. Oh, Sue, with that, you captured a likeness too. Oh, and you even got some like a good emotion on your face. I love the hair too. Oh, I like it. I like how you overlapped. I'm trying to see your name, but we just have Michael's one there. Um, very nice. Barbara, what you got? You're spotlighted. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so fun. That is so great. Oh, James, that's really nice. And I love how you overlapped, but you stayed in that same spot, like all of your overlapping uh, stayed together. I can tell you were really focused there. Mary Lou, I love it. The crazier, the better for me when those lines are going all over the paper. I know you guys are really trusted in this process. That one is so fun. <laughs> 
That reminds me, there's a new Studio Ghibli movie, The Earwig and the Witch. It reminds me of one of the characters from that movie. Oh, I love that. Yes, that's so minimal, but that's so great. Very nice. We're doing, I wonder if she was doing the same face. Oh, I love the overlapping on that one, Kylie. I could look at these all day. Um, wow, I love how you overlapped, but yours stayed all together too, just like James. Okay, let's follow one more person. Angela, oh, that's gorgeous. There are so many artists um, who I follow on Instagram and I should name a few of them who do this technique all the time and it keep it continuous and it, that reminds me of one of the styles, that first one you had. Nice. Ooh, yes, that one right there. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, go back to spotlighting uh, me. Um, all right, so let's pick our favorite one that we have um, from this exercise and we're going to embellish it, add to it. And if you're like, it's perfect the way that it is, I don't want to add to it, then you don't have to, but I just thought this would be a fun addition and we can, you know, really use all of our, our markers if we, we didn't use all of them before. So now I'm going to like kind of add to it a little bit, maybe fill in some of the, the missing information here. There's a little sparkle in my, my eye. So we have someone, um, C. Jones, who wants to know if you wear glasses, at what point should you draw the glasses on? Like while oh. you're scribbling or afterwards? Uh, it's up to you. When I'm wearing my glasses, I just go ahead and, and draw my glasses at the you know same time when I'm doing the, the blind contours. But if it was a little much, you know, during that exercise, you could add them now. Or you could add, you know, find the place on the page where they go and, and add them blind. Um, you know, do the, the blind exercise again to add them. That could be fun so that they'll have that same feeling. All right, so yeah, now we're just going to add some, some embellishment. So if you've got like me, a favorite doodle that you like to use, like for me, it's, it's clouds. You know, if there's any moments in your drawing where things are feeling like it's not kind of your favorite part of the drawing, you can, camouflage it a little bit with something that you feel a little more comfortable with, like your favorite doodle, whatever that may be. We've all got one favorite doodle that we are really good at, right? Like I love doing dandelions. I'll do, here, let me do a little dandelion here. I'll do the stock. And then I just stipple a little sphere. I'm just going to put a dot in the center and do a little pinwheel out of that. I'm going to add dots on top of it. To make my dandelion. And then I always have like a few little dandelion puffs blowing away. That's my favorite doodle. But yeah, the purpose of this exercise is really just to strengthen that communication between your uh, drawing hand and your observational skills because it's just pure looking like you're not there's no judgment coming into it and I mean like the judgment that happens as you're drawing where you like assess you make assessments all the time every mark that you make when you're you know looking and drawing you're like well I didn't quite mean for that to look like that and you make adjustments you know but when you do the blind contour drawing all that's happening is that direct communication between your eye and your drawing hand. So that's why I was 
saying the, the crazier, the better, because the more I see crazy lines all over the place, the more I know that that person was really, you know, not that glancing down and, and looking is, you know, wrong or bad, or, you know, you failed the exercise. If you looked at the paper, I totally cheat and look at the paper all the time. Um, but you know, I've gotten pretty good at not judging myself too harshly, um, at least in my, my art life, in my personal life, which I could totally apply this more to my, to my personal life, just, you know, not judging the mistakes that I make and, and embracing it, you know, but my point is, um, you know, I'm, if I see that it looks you know, totally not like the subject that I'm drawing, like I just do it again. I don't, I'm not too hard on myself about this. And when I teach in person, you know, I hear all kinds of comments from, from students around the room or around the Zoom, um, you know, of how bad it looks or how, you know, like I saw somebody said in the chat, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, those sorts of comments. And, you know, everybody feels that way the first time that they, they do this exercise. And um, when I taught middle school, um, especially the students loved to watch me do it first because they would be, you know, I'd face them around the classroom and I wouldn't look at the board and I would just, you know, do this on the board and I would hear them laughing at me and, you know, saying all kinds of comments about how it looked. And I just loved that, you know, because I'm like, I don't care if they're laughing at what I'm doing. But then when I would hear them like saying any negative comments about their own, then I'm like, hey, 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 you know, like, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to, you know, say negative things to ourselves. Um, it's all about the, the process and, and the learning. And if you learned something and you progressed and you strengthened your observational skills, then it's totally a success. So use this exercise as much as possible to help, you know, just gain that humility and that forgiving yourself for not always making marks that you intended to make on the paper because that's where the fun really starts to happen in art making and you know as a professional artist I let myself play all the time and all of the abstract work that I do is is a testament to um, just giving myself that freedom to let whatever happens happen and using ink is, you know, I have a whole philosophy behind my preference for using ink. It's so permanent, but then, you know, I have to let it guide me instead of trying to force it to do what I want it to do. I let it tell me what, what it wants to be, be a channel for the muse to come through you and the less you can judge yourself and what you're doing the more that channel opens up and you get that flow that that happens like a, a runner's high you know where you're just completely in the moment and everything is is flowing very freely. So I think doing this exercise is a great way to open yourself up to that. Well, we've got about 13 minutes left in the class and I'm just going to keep adding some, some cool embellishments and try to use all of the colors here in my set of markers. Hopefully you guys are doing the same and then we can see everybody's embellishments here in a bit. I haven't used any purple yet. I just want like rings of Saturn around my head. That's always fun. I 
gonna get that with my other example thing. So. And if you're like, I don't know what to add to mine, look around the room and see what you see around the room. Like I've got a really cool lampshade over here that could inspire me, like the fringe or the pattern on the lampshade. Or maybe you've got a plant in the room that you could look toward for inspiration. I'm going to turn my shoulder down here into a lampshade shape. I'm inspired by that lampshade. A while back, I had a class on developing a, a daily drawing practice where I gave a lot of um, tips for, you know, starting and keeping a, a regular drawing practice. And this is definitely something that you could do every day just to keep that muscle memory going. And one of the ideas you know, that I gave in that class for something to just like put in your 20 minutes of drawing practice was, um, I think I did some blind contours in, in that class a little bit. I just kind of drew some stuff on my desk, but uh, with doing patterns. So if there's, you know, a certain pattern that you're really drawn to, just filling in some of the areas in your blind contour with the pattern could be really nice. I think this little square pattern I've been doing in a lot of my abstract work recently. I was inspired by uh, the mushrooms that grow on trees. Those like orange, like I think there's chicken of the woods is one of them. Not those, it's a similar don't remember the name of it. Anybody knows you can put it in the chat, but um, they just stack on top of each other. And that was the, the inspiration for square pattern that I've been using. But then I have this whole spiel that I talk about, about how it in this series that I'm, I've been working on, on lucid dreaming, where I, I like to say that the squares are symbolizing flying in dreams because they're going to float on top of the rest of the the painting and when I have lucid dreams where I fly in my dreams it's always like a floating thing that happens anyway that's the story of my little square patterns I also like to repeat this little crescent moon thing over and over again.
color if you just really don't know what to add. You can use those shading techniques that I've referenced in so many classes. So hatching, cross hatching, stippling and scribbling. Like I've done some stippling dots in purple in my hair. Um, just doing some hatching lines here on the side. All right, well, we are nearing the end of the class and I see a couple of folks are saying thank you and ducking out already. So maybe I'll stop there and we can spotlight um, a few people before we we end for the evening and see how you guys have added um, embellishments. <laughs> um, so Raina, can we spotlight a few people and see? Oh, fun. Oh, I love that we're spot. Yeah, if we could spotlight some of the same people and see how they added to the ones we already saw, that'd be great. Very great, Shauna. Let's see. Oh, I love those patterns. I oh, like how you're getting some flowers and little curly cues in there. Oh, I love that, Mary Lou. Yeah, you really you resolved some of your um, the the things that were a little indistinct um, really brought them into focus. That's great. Oh, that's so fun, Barbara. Really nice. Oh, let me see, James. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, I like the trees and the water. Oh, look at that. That is so fun. These are also fun. Oh my gosh, yes. I love it. That is a masterpiece. <laughs> Christina, that is, that's my favorite one. <laughs> She's shaking her head no. Ooh, Suzanne, you're, I don't know. It's a toss up between that one and the last one. I love that. I love that so much. Really nice. I love that purple. Oh yes, Sue. I love how you added all those colors to the hair, but it kept the face the black and white. That contrast is really nice. See, well, my favorite thing about, oh man, you guys are talented, Nadine. Yes. This is my favorite thing about this is that when it's done like so well like this, where, you know, the color is just added confidently and there's a quality to this that it's like, you know, put that in a frame and put it in the Museum of Modern Art. That is a masterpiece to me. I love it so much. Really nice. Um, I'm sure not everybody will agree with me on that, but I'm a big fan of this kind of, this careless style that, that comes across in this way. Very nice, Vicky, you see here. Like the little angel wings on the, the necklace there. All right, can we spotlight maybe one more person? Oh, we're back to me. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, if that I was everybody, I think. Oh my gosh, is that everyone? Oh, we're a small group. Well, um, thank you all so much. And yeah, if you want to um, join me on the Instagram live, I will go over there about 7.05 Central Time. Um, in just a few minutes and answer any questions or just, you know, keep the discussion going and talk about what we did tonight in class. And if you don't join, it'll be up on my um, Instagram, like in the IGTV section, it saves um, the videos. And you can see the recording of this class on YouTube tomorrow. And then uh, next week's class is a, uh, I believe it is portrait drawing using a graphite ground. So hopefully I'll see you for that class and thank you all and have a wonderful evening. Uh, and my Instagram is at Adrian Hodge Art. Here, I'll put it back on, on the screen there. So at Adrian Hodge Art, if you wanna come join me for the Instagram live. All right, thank you so much. Um, have a great night, everyone.